Hi. The first 15 days of October have been varied to say the least. Shirt sleeve weather for the first four days. Then a drop in temperature followed by rain. Problem with the rabbit fence construction due to lack of concentration on my part. A break from the allotment to carry out some internal decorations and have carpets fitted. Rectification of the self-inflicted fencing problems which bit into my busy schedule and foreboding warnings from the Oracle about a Buick Swan arriving with snow on its beak and the utilisation of inclement weather to plant roses and make fence postcards and then the first frost of autumn. The first four days of October were brilliant, not a cloud in the sky and really warm and the birds singing. I transferred the levels from the south end of the line of posts and transferred it down to the far end and secured it with a clamp. It's not easy doing levelling on your own but it can be done. I then take a reading at this point, subtract one from the other, find what the difference is, move the post accordingly and re-secure it and you now have the new level. Ground level at the highest point of the slope is established as the datum and this establishes where the straining wire is positioned. The chicken wire that is buried underground is then placed into the trench and clipped to this wire. And when clipped, uh, the spoil from the trench is then backfilled into the uh, trench covering the wire. This is a view of the 50% of the trench which I've uh, dug and now filled. I can now start digging at the other end. And when dug, I, uh, the spoil is taken out as before to the side of the trench so that the chicken wire can be placed at the bottom of it. And this is a view of the completed excavation and the soil deposited on the side. I'll now start transferring levels and putting in wire. And as before, the wire is placed in position and uh, unclipped. chicken wire then in position I then position the main fencing wire into the fence at the higher level. I was feeling proud of myself that I'd done a good day's work and I cleared up and on the way uh, to exit the uh, allotment I noticed that this wire had gone slack. Why? What had happened? And then I could see what had happened. I'd been over strenuous with the strainer and I'd pulled the uh, post over and it now has to be straightened. Now this is a job for another day. Uh, we planned uh, to decorate uh, our rooms at home and here I am bringing the redundant carpet, the old carpet up. I thought I could use it for weed control on the allotment. <laughs> Between coats of paint waiting for it to dry, I did make one or two trips uh, to do that laborious job of clipping the wire. I gave this straightening of the post a lot of thought. I considered uh, a turfer and jacks and then I remembered when I was a boy scout and doing my pioneers badge, I had to demonstrate the use of a Spanish windlass and I thought that's what I'll do. I'll put in a Spanish windlass. A rope is threaded through a convenient hole, mortise hole left in the old post and then it's taken down 
and hooked over the straining post I hammered in, making it secure. Taking up a spare stick, I then wind away until it starts to straighten. Keeping an eye on it being plumb, and when I think I'm nearly there, I jam the strainer that I've got there to the side of the trench to hold it, stop it springing back and then put on the spirit level and check for plumb. It needed just a couple more turns after this but it's now secure. With it being secure I now put in a, a strainer which I think I should have done before I tightened the wire up but uh, it's easy to have hindsight. So I'd, I've just put it in there with a, a straining peg and then it's nailed and secured in position. There's the finished product, all it needs now is a coat of preservative. Preservative is up and going on. When I've got that on, I can then start restraining in the wire back. Taking care this time in straining and just pinging it, I think that's B flat and uh, when I think it's tight enough, securing it into position. at this point is just below ground and it's getting in the way so I have to do a little bit of excavation just to clear the path of the hammer to get those uh, staples on. And it's back now to that laborious job of tying in uh, the chicken wire uh, to the chicken wire that's buried underground. I had to give some attention to uh, my brassicas. Uh, they were getting eaten by slugs and snails and caterpillars and uh, we'd had a frost and uh, what I found was a, a lot of dead um, caterpillars. So I thought it's a good job I'll clear the hoops off I don't need it to protect them from butterflies and I can get a good weeding and sort out those snails and slugs. Here's one of the dead caterpillars, completely frozen from the frost. And then it was back to the backfilling of the spoil in the trench, levelled up. Returned to the brassicas and the leeks and uh, did some uh, TLC and a feed. This is Dick. Dick has the 
next allotment to me and he grows the best veg on the plot which is why my plot is called the Ponderosa because Dick has the best plot this side of the Ponderosa. Cutting vertical posts square with a saw isn't easy but I've had lots of practice. The only tip I can give is you must have a sharp saw and you must let the saw do the work, not pushing it. Doing it nice and easy and steady and then you should get a true square top like this one. It really is a boring and long tedious job tying in the top wire. Rain was forecast the next day so before it started I promised to put in some roses for my wife. Here we are. Well here's my wife just finishing off. And as forecast the rains came. And this is the finished job. Another job for a rainy day is to make the fence post caps. These are made from scrap timber out of the scrap pile. You can buy them and the cheapest I've found is £1.80 each. I.e. £27 for about 15 Most people have a, a saw but it has to be sharp. A new saw costs around about £7. <laughs> On this shot I'm cutting down the grain which is harder than cutting across so again the saw has to be sharp. Not essential but if you've sawn down the grain it does pay to uh, plane it but you have to have a plane and that can put up the price of the cap. But if you know somebody that has a sharp plane why not borrow it? Here we, we are using our fingers as a marking gauge, which is cheap, simple, doesn't cost anything. But if you have a marking gauge, use it. A new marking gauge will cost in the region of £5. It is essential that you plane off the corners of the cap now uh, to drain off the water. Uh, when you're doing the end grain uh, you have to go just plane to the middle and then turn it round and plane to the middle again from the other direction or you will split the timber. And if you haven't got a plane you've got to uh, find somebody that has one or somebody that will do it for you. You can buy a second hand plane uh, for around about £30, no more than £40. A new plane will cost in the region of £50 to £60, but you will need an oil stone because you've got to sharpen it. Or if you've got a router uh, with an angle blade, you can use that. Uh, this one cost me £10 at Bentley Fair about four years ago. Or this one bought from Aldi for £30 plus £9 for the bits. Or this one bought for £100 but that's a Rolls Royce. There's the finished article. Quite nice and even bevels. All that remains.
recommends now is to give it a coat of preservative and I'm trying out the new cuprinol coloured ones and this one was £9 a tin. I think it's quite effective. <music> I think it's important to use uh, post caps because a post cap, even if you bought one, is cheaper than a post and uh, when it's gone rotten you just replace it. The cost of the tools, if you want to make your own, is about £50 so it's not really worth it. But when you're using reclaimed posts, which are all different sizes, then you have to make your own caps. So what you've saved on one, you lose on the roundabout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I do look forward to your comments. Bye.